all these parts you see here, they're gonna be installed today. We have lowering springs in here and the rest is just one that's all supported. Have the dampeners, this is front, this is rear. Also replace the dust caps and the bump stops. Um, might as well replace the top heads. Might as well want to replace the, um, the end links, the sway bar. Because I do have a clunk in the suspension, so I'm not sure if this is from the end links because there are 100,000 miles in there. Or it's a different issue. And I'm also gonna replace the tension struts. The wife did the thing, so that comes off. So this already is the um, 704 option. So it is the sports, the M sports suspension on here. When you're in the distance, it looks fine. But when you get closer, like I'm now, this is just horrendous. And the same on the rear, it's just too much. So I wanna close this gap. I'm thinking about maybe 10 in the back and 15 in the front millimeters to lower it. Ground clearance is a thing I can't get anywhere. So in order to drop it, I have to remove the splitter. Since it's broken, I'm okay with that. So I will start with the rear suspension first because there are just less parts. And because you only have to open up here and one at the bottom, and then it should come out. So before I take the car up, first we unlatch the bench to give us some space to remove the headrest. Mm -hmm. Now we can take this out. Headrest out. And now we have space to work up here. We take the speaker cover out, it's the same. Just take plastic wedges. You go here between the plastic edge and the parcel shelf. Then you wedge it out. Just be careful to wedge it all the way on both sides out. Once you got that out, you have your speaker underneath here. It's held on with three T25 Torx. And under there you have a cushion, like a foam isolation. It's like triangular shaped. And you take the piece that, that points to the front, you pick it up from there. It gives you enough space to access the 13 millimeter hex underneath there. I think I said it before, but I do keep one flat on the car because this was about two weeks ago, plugged from the outside and number one. Not two if this is through or not, I hope not, but I wouldn't be surprised. Also this is left two weeks ago and the right one, not sure where the plug is, but that one had the rear right, had also a puncture just last week. So two punctures, two weeks. I keep one fence on there. Is that what you want? I know they're not the most comfortable. And I know they wear like shit on the inner edge. You can see it here already again. The inner edge here, you can see it right. I'm running these with the rear ones. These are the 19 inch 351 wheels with, that's the measure. I want them with 3.3 bar and the front ones the 245 with 2.8 bar. So way more than BMW says. We get to the problems here in a second. Parts first. I'm going with the original Bildstein dampener. Bildstein dampener. That's Deutsch. And the part number. Bildstein part number is this. These bastards here, they will be quite a problem in a moment. But they go down here. It's number one. And then you have three on each side. These are the nuts. 13 millimeter hex for the top head. I have the bump stops. Part number again. The axle both the same. Top head also both the same. Part number is here. And of course the spring is missing. The spring is in here. And here, all kinds of stuff, some rubbers, that's where that goes. Yeah, some of whatever that is. And of course the springs. And uh, adjustable heads. So get to that in a moment. But first Actual problem is the rear axle front should be easy. So this is how I loosen the bottom screw 
that's a 21 millimeter here that's a 10 inch long extension and a utterly long this is a top range that goes to like 400 millimeter so for completeness sake on the right side the 10 inch is too long and you come like this and you go through here through the swing and you can fiddle here also going not to the size of this one this is a 10 inch this is apparently shorter works perfect one screw at the bottom and four on the top are all out still in place holds i guess i have to convince this thing out here so you put one of the nuts on top to prevent it from just falling forward. just give it a push that's how you get that out also shows you how far you have to pull this wheel down when you want to get a new one in. So as to how I took the old ones out, I removed the brakes and that gives you enough clearance down here. You just have to push it down a little bit, but then you can pretty much like so take it out here and then wiggle it down. In will be easier because it's shorter, a little triangle here that points straight down side pretty much that is important so once you have it's only like this again that you have your um, bolts in the right position as to how to install these springs of course you compress this first you open up the front it's a 17 and some maybe a, a six millimeter head comes off everything comes off pretty easy take the new one unless you use the old one you remove the rubber here you don't reuse this one you have to remove this cap to slide the adjuster unit on this thing here and afterwards you put this cap back on if you don't have ddc dynamic dampening control which i don't have apparently i have to install a one of the supplied rubber rings on top of here and then you put it back together straightforward so as i mentioned this little triangle here is pointing to the rear of the car because that is the left side. So and because I don't have to buy a tool to get in here, there's a six millimeter Allen in there and it's an 18 millimeter hex, but these won't fit. They're not angled enough. So I just clamp a grip torque, a grip wrench here. Just open it this way. Just pull the cap off, it really isn't that tight on there. Now, our seat, this would adjust the height, the right height. On like this. We'll be tight using the set screws here. We have a notch here. This notch goes to this triangle here. That's where it sits, just like this. Somehow the new knot is 19 millimeter. Whatever. Again, I would have to grip it, but because of the bump stop, if I grip it all the way on top here, where the bump stop is, this portion will never go into the, the dampener, so I'm fine. This is an alternative that definitely works. If you look closely, there's nothing, no damage. So it's a hard spot anyway. So when putting it back in, it's not that complicated. If you align a triangle on the head, the way it was, your, your studs will match up pretty much perfectly. You will fiddle it in first, then use one hand to hold it here and the other hand up there to put your new nuts on there. I'm just tightening the top and then have to bridge this gap from here to here. As for torque specs, the nut on the dampener is about 35, 34, 35. The three on the inside here, there's the cover, if this is side. That is the top nut, part 34, 35, and these three, you see them here, 30 millimeter, one there, one down there. These are 28, gonna go with 30 newton meter. And this bastard here is gonna be 90 newton meter and 180 degree. Um, since I took the brake off, those are these here. These little ones, I think it's 18 millimeter. These are, if I remember correctly, 110 newton meter. One of the biggest issues is, of course, getting the dampener to line up with the seat up here. What I did on the other side 
is a little wood, more space. And I just like to level this thing up. This way I push the dampener up and the rest of the suspension down and I got it into place. Uh, it wasn't easy, it was quite an act and this side will be even worse most likely. But it is what it is. One trick, you really want to remove a one side of the sway bar end length, remove the lower ones. Without this, you won't be able to push this far enough down to really align the dampener here. Once you torque the nuts down here, you put your cover back on, you, your foam, you put the speaker back in, so you're not pinching any cables. You put the G25 back in and you put the cover back on. And that's it for the top. Oh, of course, fold the bench down, put the headrest back in. So the speaker cover has these noses on the rear, so you slide it in and you clip it in place. You have these clips all around. So push it back and then push it down. This is gonna do the front suspension. It is on paper, of course, pretty simple. You have one, two, or three on top, so 13 millimeter. You have on the bottom the fork down there. You get to the size of it once I open it. Um, you, of course, also gonna remove the sway bar end link and then your strut assembly is already loose. But it doesn't mean that you're gonna get it out. Most people opening up the top swing, the top arm. I'm gonna remove the tension strut because I'm gonna change it anyway. And let's see how far I get with that. I don't want to take out too much. I've also prepared these already. So once I got the assembly out, I just take the, I just need the rubber, the rubber for the top because the new top head is on there anyway. Remember to keep ordering these nuts here separately because none of the dampeners came with any of it. They just come by itself, nothing extra. I'm used to having the strut arriving with the nut on it, but I was a little bit pessimistic about it and it paid out. Everything else will be done here. The adjuster head is on here, secured by the three little um, screws in here. So I put the cap back on, you have to remove the plastic cap in here, put it back on afterwards, new bump stop and dust cover, that's it, let's go. I already prepared a little bit, you take off the under tray, you take off these little triangular pieces here on the side, these here, just hold by four screws, and now you have access to the torx down here, the e torx and then of course you have to draw it on the other side, down there, and then it already comes out. You need to order the bolt separately. The nut for out here comes with the piece. Here you see the E20. The bolt comes out to this side. This is the 24. You open that up. You probably have to take a Torx to hold it. See some cracks here. Both sides, both arms. So like this. It's not totally failed yet, but since I take it out anyway, might as well change it. This should have some resistance. It's like wobbling around, so. It's not absolutely dead, and I also didn't have strong symptoms. Just the driving is overall, the suspension is overall a little bit floaty. Next, I'm gonna remove the sway bar end link. You have a T40 Torx on the inside and a 18 mm hex nut. Take them both out. Here, okay, while the end links are not too bad, the top one is still somewhat decent, considering the miles the guy has driven on. It's, it's bad, but the bottom one is just like both bottom ones are like pretty bad, so it's a good thing to change them anyway. They're just like $20 a piece, so it doesn't hurt much. We have a 21 millimeter nut here, 
And the other side is a 18 millimeter. Then you remove the 330 millimeter on top and wiggle this thing out somehow. I don't want to remove anything else because the tension strut is already out, which that provides a lot of tension upwards. Nothing really happened. So the wheel up assembly didn't shoot up as expected because right now it's only hanging on the upper arm and on the lower arm. So I got the assembly apart, dust cap apparently ripped. So cracking up here. It's trash now, the spring is still fine. And let's take a look at the damper. So you all know a damper should be pushed in and then come out again. Right? <laughs> 105,000 miles it's on the car right now. First dampeners, these are trash. I don't even have to keep them. It's very trash. I only keep the spring. In case this is trash, this goes to trash. That's the only thing I need from the assembly. That goes to these bodies together with the new top heads and a couple of bolts. Oh, interesting. Because the original ones are 13 millimeter, now this is a Etox. Very interesting. Not sure why they would do that, but apparently they did. Um, S4 alignment. A little triangle on top here. that lines up with the black one here. It goes in one position. And then the forward alignment. This is the left one. Installed like this. This little piece here shows in the drive direction. And you have one hole here on the side that lines up pretty much sideways. So we adjust it like this. It's not that bad. A little more maybe. And you also have this triangle here, the indicator. It points towards the front center of the car. See, this is drive direction here. This points a little bit over there. So let's talk torque specs. This one is the lower one and apparently I either forgot to order the new one or it hasn't arrived and is still waiting on another shipment for another project. So that's a little bit, makes me a little bit uneasy because you torque this one with 90 Newton meter and then 180 degree. So this is quite a stretch for this thing and I will change that as soon as I get a chance. And the upper ones, these little ones here, we torque with 30 Newton meter, roughly about that. The new screws that came in the set are E16. Another thing I just realized, these new top hats, they have no threads in here. That means your new screws have to cut them. So in order to line this one up on top, I just used the drag to lift it up down here the bottom and push it up there. The bottom one still, because there's a, a bushing in there, this would have to be tightened at normal lager, meaning at level, at drive level. So I have to drag it up. But first I'm gonna add the tension strut and the missing sway bar end link. Sway bar end link is 40 Newton meter and 40 degree. Once you tighten the tension strut again, it's like 85 Newton meter and 180 degree. And down here it's 100 Newton meter, 90 degree. You of course have to push the wheel up. This has to be tightened in, in the car's level. You just put your plastic underneath here again, put the under tray on, and then finally get to adjust the right height, see where the car sits and where I want it to sit. And then tomorrow it will be measured. I'll give you an update once this is complete. To adjust these strings, you have these nice tools that it now provides you. You see one is bigger than the other. And the smaller one is for the lock ring and the bigger one is for the adjustment ring. The adjustment ring is the one above the lock ring. So first you unlock it and then you set your height and then you lock it again. First driving impression, it is definitely a little stiffer. It feels a little more bumpy, meaning it doesn't swallow bumps like the small bumps as easy as before anymore. That was kind of expected. Also, fresh dampeners, let them break in a little bit. It is a harsher ride, a little bit, but it's not uncomfortable harsh. But you feel it's more like a 3 series now from the driving. It feels a lot more direct. Just went through a faster corner and it's just so planted. It's just very direct. Of course, you're gonna lose some comfort. You gain the directness. Bumps or 
speed harms are definitely more punishing. Um, probably more so if you come from like a standard suspension. If you have the M Sport, you already used a little bit to it, but this is still a little bit. It's still quite a jump. But if you come from like the standard suspension to just change your springs and your dampeners to what I have here, which is just uh, M Sport dampeners and the h &R springs, you will feel quite a big difference. It's very noticeable still. The body overall moves a lot less. It just refreshes the car. It makes it more sporty. It makes it more nimble. It feels smaller. And it feels like you have more control and it gives you also more confidence. That's the first observation from the drive down to the, the shop where I get the bits aligned. So lastly, let me tell you about my setup. The front axle did settle a little bit, the rear axle did not. So on the rear axle, I have it set all the way to the bottom. You measure from the top of the dampener plate to the bottom of the um, spring. That is basically the height of the adjustment head. It is about 24, 25 millimeter on this spring set. On the front, I had to raise it up a little bit because it settled a little bit over there. And now it's set to 30 millimeter. So I raised it up six millimeter from the bottom and that's how I'm driving. I like it so far. I don't really scrape anywhere, which is good. And it has the look that I really want. So I'm happy with that. But now let me tell you about the alignment, which I'm not happy with that at all. So of course, after fiddling with the suspension, the car has to be aligned. You see, it's my bin, okay. That's the date when I installed it. And I installed it the day before, that's the alignment date. Of course, it comes in all over the place and it was aligned, fine. You cannot adjust the camber on the front axle on the F10s. BMW offers a plus 30 or minus 30 um, degree minutes fixed top control arms. And there is a adjustable upper control arm for Myla, I believe, which gives you a range from negative 30 to plus 30 degree minutes and that's what i'm gonna install next because i'm sitting at 1.4 about on the front which honestly it's actually fine with me it's not a big problem i've been driving greater negative campus before with no problems at all and if you see the rear is about 1.8 average it's fine too where's the problem here now this seems fine yep so i fall too um let's ignore the fact that they damaged the car while taking it onto the lift and it took them five weeks to order it and I had to show up almost every week. I had to call in every week and I showed up three times before they finally ordered it. That's a good sign, right? And by the time, I mean, once I took the car back, at the evening of this day, I already called them, telling them that the steering wheel isn't straight. It's totally pointing to the left side and also the car is pulling to the left side. And in those weeks, until they got to fix it again, I also noticed that the car is very unstable. The front end is all over the place. It's just not good. After about um, five weeks after this, end of February, beginning of March, I went in again. So they finally ordered a part that they broke. They haven't. Even though about beginning of February, they told me they ordered it and they're waiting for the part right now. Clearly lying to me. So when going in, also showed them the front tires which have been about 75% new by the time of this alignment. And now they are dead. So after about, they got to realign it after six weeks. I'm going to show you that in a moment. And at six, after six weeks, the car was driving 1500 miles and the tires are dead, as you can see here. And they aligned it again. And they wouldn't even give me a incoming measure. There is a gap between this is how it left and this is how it comes in again wouldn't show me this and I just aligned it again fixing a little bit here and there it overall looks the same if you're honest and now this thing wheel is pointing to the right side a little bit but the car drives a lot better so that was an instant improvement after the second alignment I believe they really screwed up some measures here I mean I know how you can cheat a measure I can get you this alignment without actually opening a single screw but it's a different story it looked fine it looks fine, it drives a lot better now compared to this one here. And this alignment did destroy my front tires. So with this little alignment here, they cost me about, the tire is about $500. Plus installation, blah, they cost me about $1,200 in damage and they would refuse to do anything about it. Um, saying that, oh, the car is lowered and it's a negative camber and it's on either tire where the rear is way worse. 
And I also pulled up an even older one from the same shop. And look at that, to me it was the same, even more negative. And I've been driving this for tens of thousands of miles. And the rear tires have never had a problem. I'm sure some of you guys have similar camber like this, not have a problem in combination with how bad the car handled, how bad the front end behaved. That was something in the toe off and that really caused that problem here. But anyway, as a remedy, I have to get new tires now. Thank you. And I'm also gonna install some adjustable upper control arms. They only give me like negative 30 plus, plus minus 30. So I will come to like about one, 1.1 degree negative camber on the front. And that is literally nothing, if you're honest. That is just a preventative measure I take here. But I really don't expect anything else. And of course, I've been getting all kinds of excuses, like, oh, we only measure on the outside or just on the average. I don't even know if that's the right tire. And I literally had that same tire um, measured just a week before the alignment. That was about 10 days before at a different place because I had a flat one. Of course, they were massive all tires instead of just the one that I told him. Um, but you could clearly see tires have been good all around the front ones, seven to eight on average. Inner is seven to eight and now it's dead. And you're telling me that's because of a 1.3, 1.4, I just say the old one, a 1.4 degree negative camber. I call BS on this big time. Thank you Mountain View Auto in Warden Heights, California for causing me $1,200 worth of damage. Did a great job here. So why did I go to that place to get a car measured? But I screwed it up because I've been there a couple times before. It was fine. There was no problem before. And problems can happen. Things go wrong. Fine. Like they broke the under tray. Fine. Replace it. There's no other damage to it. Fine. It's easy. Not a big deal. Right. But how they handled the, the, the issue that they created on the front axle and how it destroyed the, the tires in less than 1500 miles. That is just what really pissed me off. It's just this defensive stance that they take. They don't take responsibility for their actions. That doesn't sit well with me. Anyway, I hope you will never have to experience something like this. It is such a drag to find competent mechanics. I'm so close to just getting those few things to not have to deal with it anymore. A, a tire machine. I would like to have a tire machine so I can change my tires myself. Because every time I need new tires, there are more scratches on them. I align it quite often. You know, I still have a little issue with the rear main seal on the N55. And I'm literally looking into um, what equipment would I need to drop the transmission in the garage here. Because honestly, I'm so tired of it. And apparently there are some equipments that I can get. And I may attempt that myself on jack stands, dropping the transmission which is gonna be a thing, but at least then I know it's done properly. There are no new problems, no hidden problems. Just imagine someone messes up that, that rear main seal. And you have to redo it. Last time, a couple of years ago, I was quoted like almost 2K for this job. And then you have to do it again. And then they'd be like, oh, must be someone else, but not me. You have to pay again. No, thank you. So, especially with this one over here, more work coming to this. Boat. You see the headliner is already out, waiting for a new headliner because the other new headliner <laughs> is quite screwed up. This is also one experience I made first time now um, getting parts. It's just such a drag. It takes, it's been weeks now. It's been about three weeks since I touched this car the last time and I've just been waiting on parts ever since. I will get to it. Once I get the parts, I'm going to get working on that and put this thing we see. There are more things already laying in front of me here I have to install to this car. So stay tuned. I'll get to it, film it, so you can do it too. Thank you for watching and I'm gonna see you on the next video.